everyone. I am the Reverend Lydia Ferrante Roseberry. I'm the minister of this congregation, no matter how and where we gather. And I am joined today by our minister emerita, the Reverend Catherine Harris. Pete Wernick is our service associate today, and you will be hearing from him on his banjo actually today. Tad Koryath and Emily Jaworski are providing hymns, and you just heard their beautiful cornerstone, which is was written by Tad. And he's adding a verse every week. So thank you so much, so much, Tad. And of course, we have our ever important and growing list of tech ushers. Deborah Mensch, Mary Stagpole, Cameron Weiss, Don Price, and Eric Williams are all behind the scenes today supporting this virtual service. So here we are again, looking at each other in tiny boxes. I'm so grateful to see your faces today. If you see me look to the left over, look this way, um, it's because that's where I see you and it does bring me lots of joy to be able to look at your faces once in a while. I really do miss you and I'm so glad that we're still able to gather. Today we're continuing with our theme of the five jagged rocks of Unitarian Universalism as we explore the question of what does our theology as Unitarian Universalists uh, say to us that can support us through challenging times. So let me remind you that the jagged rocks are, um, there is a unity that makes us one, and that we explored last week with a beautiful service from Donna Samini and Chris Rathwig. This week we're looking at courageous love transforms the world. Many of you may know that the etymology of the word courage is heart. So it's connected to our innermost feelings and the quality of mind which enables us to overcome fear. 
So as we look, at, we'll be looking at the bravery of action, the courage that it takes to act, but also the inner context of what it means to be courageous in challenging times. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday, so we're taking up the theme of salvation in this life and what Easter can mean for Unitarian Universalists. And the following two Sundays will be All Souls Are Sacred and Worthy and the final of the Jagged Rocks, Truth Continues to be Revealed. I'm so glad so many of you are joining us for these services. And you are all welcome here today. In all the beauty of languages, cultures, skin tones, shapes, and sizes that come together in your uniqueness, you are welcome here. In all the ways that you experience and express gender, you are welcome here. In the beauty that is who you love and how you love, you are welcome here. In all the ways you make your living, in all the places you are from, you are welcome here. Muslim, pagan, humanist, Jew, Buddhist, mystic, Christian, Unitarian Universalist, with all the traditions that inform your spiritual life, you are welcome here today. And whether you are a first time visitor or a long time member, you are welcome here. Whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears today, you are welcome amongst us. You're invited to join us with an open mind, a loving heart and willing hands. We welcome everyone this morning. I especially welcome our visitors and newcomers. We're glad you found us and hope that even in this virtual community, you will experience the warmth and the love of this congregation. Each Sunday is different here, so please come back a few times to really get to know us. If you are new to us and want to stay connected, please see the chat window for a link to the first time visitors page or email your information to our office manager, Carol, at officemanager at bvuuf.org, and her address will also be in our chat window. So I do have a couple of announcements this morning. There is something new in the BVUUF Studio One. Let's see who can put the correct answer into the chat. Anybody see what's new in the studio today? A chain fence, yes, we have a chain fence here. Do you know what that means? This is actually a piece of the fence that used to be around our fellowship building. So now, irony of ironies, at this time when we would be loving to move back into our space and it's ready for us, we are in a time when we need to practice physical distancing and cannot actually get in to complete that project. So we are going to remain very careful and follow all the protocols around physical distancing until such time as we can actually gather in our new building. And in the meantime, we will continue to be a congregation without borders and a congregation without a fence around our building anymore for that matter. It's such an incredible symbol for who we are in this moment actually. The fence is down, we are fully open and welcoming to everyone. I hope you are finding ways to keep connected over Zoom during these many days of physical distancing. Our calendar on the BBUUF website is full of opportunities. And I do want to add um, one thing that we're starting this week is on Thursday at 7 p.m. I will be offering an evening of sharing and personal reflection using a poem as a centering point for that. These offerings will be based on Parker Palmer's Circle of Trust process that the congregation had been doing uh, for a while. And those will be on the second Thursday of the month for April, May, and June. My office hours for this week are 12 to 2 on Wednesday and 11 to 12 on Thursday. So you can use the Zoom link at the bottom of my emails and just pop in anytime to chat during that time. Or you can uh, email me or text me and make an appointment as well. I'm certainly glad to keep connected with you in any way we can. 
And finally, it is still pledge season here at the fellowship. Despite our best intentions to finish up our pledge drive earlier this year, the unexpected upended all of our lives. So I have, a two, I have two announcements related to this year's pledge drive. The first one is that even in the midst of this, our generosity continues and it's um, inspiring and humbling to me. We've received another 30 pledges for the past two weeks and have raised to date almost $442,000 of our $489,000 goal for next year's operating budget. So there's still a gap, as you can hear in those numbers, and we're waiting to hear from 41 pledge families. Pledging is vital for our financial planning. So if you haven't made a pledge yet, please either send a pledge card to the office or pledge online at our website. Even if it is to tell us that you're unable to pledge this next year, that does help us uh, figure out what our parameters will be in the budget. And my second announcement is that it's a reminder that next week is Easter Sunday and it will be our final, final Sunday of the pledge drive. And I'm delighted to announce that because of the generosity of one of our members, you will be invited to make one last gift to the pledge drive and it will be matched dollar for dollar up to $5,000. So we will be watching our Easter dollars multiply like bunnies. And I think it's going to be a lovely service next Sunday, so please do come. Now I'd like to invite Reverend Catherine Harris, my dear friend, and the Minister Emerita of this congregation to share with us. I know that right now, most of us are thinking of our own health, the health of those we love and the health of our country. Many of us may be without a job or low on money. We see how people in Europe and Asia with the virus are suffering. It may be hard to think of anything else. However, we may also be appreciating the courageous love shown by our doctors and nurses who risk getting the virus themselves when they're helping others who have it. This morning, we celebrate the work of the UU Service Committee, which has been working with courageous love to help people around the world who are suffering. A couple of years before I was born, when there was a big war called World War II, Unitarians created the Unitarian Service Committee to help Jews and political dissidents escape Nazis. Not everyone they helped could read English, so they decided they needed a symbol to show a safe place for people needing help and to put on the bags of food and clothing that Unitarians were sending to Europe. They asked an artist who had escaped from the Nazis in Paris to, make their, to create their symbol. He borrowed an old symbol of strength and freedom from his country, Czechoslovakia a chalice with a flame. He used a chalice or a cup because it was used to give healing drink to people. And he used a flame on top of the chalice because a flame was often used to represent a spirit of helpfulness and sacrifice. Whenever people saw a flaming chalice, they knew that there were Unitarians nearby who would help them, even if it was dangerous, dangerous for them. Unitarians worked with courageous love to help many, many people during World War II and for the last 80 years. I would like to tell you about an old woman who was in a Nazi prison camp. 
She was often hungry and cold. The guards sometimes hit her. Every single morning in that terrible camp, the old woman said she traced a picture of a flaming chalice in the sand with her finger. She said it gave her the strength to live each day. She said, whenever she drew the chalice in the dirt, she was reminded that someday the world would remember the important truth that every single person is important and should be free to think and believe as he or she chooses. This morning, when Reverend Lydia lights our flaming chalice, as we do each Sunday morning, we want to remember the UU Service Committee, which with courageous love has been helping people around the world for 80 years. Today, the UUSC is helping the people in Mexico or in detention camps in the US who are trying to escape their dangerous countries. Today, UUSC is helping Syrians whose homes have been destroyed. Today, UUSC is helping Alaskan and Louisiana tribes whose homes and cultures are being drowned in the ocean of climate change. If you have a chalice at home by your side, I invite you to light it with me at this time as well, as I light our congregational chalice. So please join me in the chalice lighting words at home as well. I'll say them and you can repeat them uh, at home. We light this chalice. For the warmth of love, the light of truth, and the energy of action. I'll now ring our bowl a second time and invite you to center yourselves once again here in this virtual community. I would like to show you a few pictures of the UUSC's courageous love to help people over the last 80 years. This, in this first one, you will see the Jewish children who were being helped by the Unitarian Service Committee. And this was the beginning of the Unitarian Service Committee, which was founded a little bit later than this picture. The second picture, here you see um, the flaming chalices on the bags and up over that map. This was in the Paris um, Unitarian um, Service Committee's office and, and some of the people who needed clothes. And then this picture from 1983, shows the UUSC sending medical supplies to Nicaragua during their civil war. By this time, Unitarians and Universalists has joined together, so you, it's the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. In 2009, UUSC and their partners in Northern Uganda help people rebuild their communities after they were destroyed by war. 
Eight years ago, in 2012, some water companies in California wanted to charge people for the water they needed to drink, to cook, and to wash themselves in their clothes. UUSC took action against that, and water remains free today. Perhaps today you hear about people needing higher wages for their work to support their families. About seven years ago, the UUSC launched a project to improve wages and working conditions of restaurant workers, and they've been working ever since on that issue. Now, will you join me with our hymn, The Fire of Commitment? It was composed was composed by UU composer Jason Shelton and with lyrics by Mary Catherine Warren, who has since become the president and CEO of the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. The hymn speaks to that courageous love of our religious tradition. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as Tad and Emily offer this music for us. And feel free to sway or sing or really get into this inspiring hymn. Thank you, Tad and Emily. This morning, we invite your full offering for UUSC. By writing postcards or calling your Congress people each month on the issue John Palasa or I place on our listserv, and or by sharing your monies, UUSC will continue to work 
with the courageous love of grassroots organizers worldwide to transform our world. You may text your donation to the number on the screen or write your check to the fellowship with UUSC in the memo line. As you share your gifts, we also invite you to remember times you have seen courageous love in the world. Please describe them briefly in the chat window for others to read. What a beautiful sharing of generosity and of sentiments of courage for all the ways that we offer our courageous love in the world, for all the ways that we see it manifest. 
and for the work of the UU Service Committee, for whom we are especially grateful today. We dedicate all of these offerings. And now we sing from you I receive to you I give together we share and from this we Okay, so raise your hand if you've never been in a worldwide pandemic before. <laughs> or if you've never had to stay at home so many days in a row when you were actually feeling fine. <laughs> or had to learn how to do your job from home or do all your school works from home or how to be a parent, a worker and a teacher all at the same time. This, my friends, is a time with a lot of change. And there's a lot that's being asked of each and every one of us. And it's all wrapped up in the unpredictability of it all. We really don't know what's next and we're needing to learn to adapt quickly over and over again. Now, our little body spirits were not really designed for this quite so much. Our bodies really like stability. We like to know what's next. There's, a, there's just a natural process in our brain and in our bodies that wants to know what's next. Courage, courage, inner courage is about being able to face the unpredictable that is so real for us right now in these days but in reality is what's happening every single day of our lives. So we've spent some time today looking at people in our tradition who brought love into action. And we've even looked around, and we can even look around today at our first responders and our essential service workers, especially those in the food industry, who are out there when the rest of us have been ordered to stay home. And we can see their courage and be so very thankful. But the other kind of courage that transforms the world is the inner courage that each of us can cultivate. The courage to stay with whatever is in front of us, especially the uncomfortable feelings that might surround us in these unpredictable times. So sure, everyone needs to find ways to have fun and relax, and I hope you're getting a lot of really great jokes over your email and um, on texts. But if, what we, but if we always are avoiding what we know is true and uncomfortable, it will show up in other ways. Maybe people are a little more angry at each other in their house these days, or maybe you're having a hard time sleeping. Those are the kinds of things that start to show up if, when we are not centered in our own feelings and courageously looking and being present to what's uncomfortable. So here's a simple thing I'd like you to try right now. And you can remember it by one word, the word stop. The S in stop, the S stands for stop. So just do that for a moment right now, stop. The T stands for take a deep breath. Let's take three of them together. The O stands for observe. Notice everything around you. What sensations do you feel in your own body? What parts of your body feel relaxed 
or tents right now. What do you see around you and how does that make you feel? What is your breath like now? Is it fast or slow, short or long? And what do you hear around you in this moment? Can you identify any smells right now? That's the O of observing. And the P in stop stands for proceed. Move on with what you were doing, but maybe with a little bit more intention a little bit more awareness, especially of the feelings that might be arising. Now, this might have been a relatively easy exercise to do while we're sitting here with each other, relaxed in front of our computer. But I invite you to take the courage to use this stop method when you feel yourself being riled up whether it's the overwhelm of this time or whether it's being with people in close quarters 24 hours a day, whatever it is that might be bringing up feelings that might be uncomfortable for you, I invite you as a practice to stop, just to check in with yourself, observe what's going on physically in your body and observe the feelings as well, and then proceed with more intention. Courage, we know, is about moving ahead even when we are scared. And it takes courage to do uncomfortable, brave things in the world. It takes courage to stop, to learn to stay in whatever discomfort our bodies might be feeling. And then, with more intention, rise again to do those courageous acts that we know we can do in the world and in our own homes and with our family and our friends. Now I invite us into our time of community connection, our time of sacred, sacred sharing, the sharing of our joys and concerns with one another. Deborah will remind you in a moment of how to let us know that you'd like to share. If you would like to share today, please just tell us your name and where you live, and then briefly, briefly let us know what is in your heart today. There are a lot of people here today, and so we do want to make sure that our sharing um, is complete, yes, but also brief. And then I will put a sacred stone, a stone into our sacred waters for you. Hmm. Oh, beloveds, so far away, and yet I do feel your closeness. Never before in human history has our profound interconnection with one another been so apparent. Never before has the valor of our fellow human beings worldwide been so evident. Never before have we all been asked to act on behalf of everyone. Each of us is making changes and each of us is changed by this worldwide event. Today I offer you this solidarity prayer for a pandemic written by Jesuit scholar Christopher Hilo Hilonia and offered to me by our member Constance Holden. May we who are merely, merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. 
May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. And, me, and may we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. And I invite us to remember that all of these exist here, even within our community. There are those among us for whom this a uh, time will be a time of deep economic struggle, and those among us for whom this time will be a time of perhaps just a little cutting back. There are those among us struggling to pay their rent. There will be those among us who are canceling trips and those who never had a trip to go on. So let us remember that the joyful moments and the milestones also exist within our community. And let us remember that even in the midst of this, our lives are full of the daily ups and downs of being human. I take a moment of deep gratitude for the virtual bouquet that I received during this service with such a beautiful surprise. And to celebrate with those who have uh, milestones like anniversaries, and those whose birthdays might be coming up, and those who are just simply grateful to be in our company, even virtually from around the world. For those who are recently engaged and love is blooming in their lives. For those who get to be reunited with family. And also together, may we join hands and hearts for those who are struggling, and my, there are so many. For those who know people who have now become victims of this coronavirus. And for those of us in fear for those we love and knowing, and knowing that we are on the verge of this big wave. For those of us who have lost family members, for those of us who are sick or friends who are sick, for those requiring other sorts of medical procedures in a time when our healthcare system is so deeply stretched. And for all the healthcare providers, the first responders, the service workers, the food creators, the truckers, all those people who are ensuring that our basic needs are covered. May we offer them our love, May we too find ways to courageously and safely serve one another during these challenging times. May this be our promise and our prayer today and always. And now please join with me as we extinguish our chalice this morning. We extinguish this chalice, but not the warmth of love, the light of truth, nor the energy of action. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again.